very serious. I want you to bring this to the government of Canada. This community here, Flat Bay, is one of the leading communities in the Aboriginal movement in Newfoundland, along with Con River. Okay? I want you to look at some people. Turn down. The Youngs. Shepherds. Kings. My daughter. Tree my children is in, tree is out. <laughs> yes. My granddaughter is out, living on the reserve in Con River. Her little girl got more points than her. She's four <coughs> year old. She visited Flat Bay more often than her mom. Let me tell you a little bit about self-identification. Anybody who visit or travel along the highway or anywhere in Flat Bay don't need our people to run around with a sign in their neck saying that they're Aboriginal people. For as long as we can research, we have researched documentation on the Bay St. George area, there's always been a present of the family names that I just mentioned to you as Aboriginal people. Absolutely. We are the first people here, and we were here when the Europeans came. Do we practice a traditional way of life? Absolutely. Just drive the Trans-Canada Highway and see how many of those people, and, and a lot of the people that are in here, spend time out there selling rabbits, selling berries, blueberries, bake apples, cranberries, selling smelts. So are we not I'm going to tell you when I'm being recorded. We sell smelts. <laughs> and we have no difficulty selling smelts. And anybody who has any smelts to sell for you for my place, and I'll take them to the corner before you. <laughs> I have no problem selling smelts. Like I had no more problem killing moose when I was raising my family, and still today when I need them. So are we not living a way of life? Now let me tell you something about our families that are away that I want you to bring to the government. This band council was incorporated in 1972. It is the only form of government in this community. No local <coughs> service district in Flat Bay West. No other form of provincial interference. The band council run the affairs of this community. One of the things that I was very, very involved in in my years as chief in this community and one of the things that I'm very proud of about is that I always looked at education as being first and foremost. Because I quit school when I was 14 years old. And I knew that the tools of today were not the same tools that I needed when I could take a buck saw and go in the woods with my dad or jump over the side of a fishing boat and make a living. We are living now in an era where education becomes a <coughs> reality. So this community did everything that they possibly could to educate their children. So when we educate our children, what were we doing? We were driving them away. Exactly. Because there were no opportunities for them here. When the government will sit down with us and negotiate our land claims, that we can put programs and services in place based on the revenue that is now being stolen from us, our children will be able to come home. But at this point in time, they can't. And I want you to bring this message to the government. Even though they're away from home, highly educated, and Flat Bay has produced in the last 35 years, I'm proud to say, and I wish we had more time for everybody here to mark down on a piece of paper what their sons and daughters have done, but we have produced some of the cream of the crop in this country, without argument. Everything from RCMP officers to the CEO of the Assembly of First Nations. So we've moved our children and we've done some good things. Even though they're away from us, are they connected? Yes. 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 Well, let me tell you how they're connected, not only by a phone call. Every person that gets on a train, not a train because they're gone, but a plane or the boat, is going with suitcases full of smelts and moose and caribou <laughs> and rabbits right, right, to bring right, to our right, children. Right. Right. Not only are they going with suitcases full of bottled meat and bottled rabbits and smelt and eels and caribou and moose, all poached by the way, <laughs> not only are they going with these things, not only are they going with these things, we have friends who are tractor trailer drivers that we meet to the trans Highway to send the care packages to our children. So ha are they connected to their community? I guess they are connected to their community. They're eating the same food that they were born and they were born and raised on. So when you go back to the government of Canada, I know it's not going to get you anywhere, but I want you to tell the government of Canada on our behalf, and Ben, I respect you, my friend, and I like you, but I want you to be louder. 
<laughs> we haven't heard you over the last three months. We want you to be louder. I'll don't be afraid to of. Words in, but he's hard to get don't be. To. I don't <laughs> want you loud. I don't want you loud here. I want you loud in front of CBC. I want you loud on the radio. I want you calling the talking shows. I want you loud. I want you telling the people the story of Flat Bay. <laughs> Do we need twelve points? We don't need twelve points. We have about hundred and twenty points. All they have to do is let them go talk to the game wardens and see how busy we keep them. <laughs> Just see how busy we keep them chasing up. That's a way of life. They're almost full time. Just after the boys in Flat Bay. They don't have any time to police anybody else. We keep them going full time. Tell that to the government of Canada. Okay, we have a crisis here. We have a crisis that is tearing families apart. You said earlier, 50 years? Well, I'm going to tell you something, Chief. <coughs> I'm ready to tear my card in two and fight for not 50 years because I don't have 50 years light left. But I will fight for whatever time i got left <coughs> to mend that divide. Thanks, Colin. And I need you to fight with me, okay? Thank you.